The new MacBook Pro M1 has made its way onto the stage and everybody is wondering why is it cheaper than the Intel version? If we've always heard about this Apple tax, how come when Apple finally launched their own processor inside of their computer, we didn't get this huge Apple tax making it more expensive than the Intel version? Well, this is exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. We're talking about the performance. We're going to talk about some of the specs, the limitations, the big benefits of using an Apple M1 chip rather than them purchasing the Intel and then putting it inside of their computer. We're going to get into all that right now. And for a full explanation on what to expect in this video, you can see what makes the difference of why the M1 is cheaper by looking at the performance. We're going to look at the technical limitations, the ports. We're going to have an explanation on Apple's confusing website. And we're going to have performance benchmarks in Photoshop. And you can also check out a full hands-on review in the YouTube cards above of why the MacBook Pro M1 is so good. Now, lastly, if you're curious about the exact pricing or availability of the MacBook Pro M1, you can head down into the description below and click that link. And if you do make a purchase of that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Let's get into why the MacBook Pro M1 is cheaper than its Intel counterpart. So first and foremost, let's look at Apple's confusing website. To understand why it's cheaper, we need to understand what it is made up of. When you first get on the website, you see that the Apple M1 chip versus the Intel processor. Now, when I first saw this, I thought, okay, why are they calling theirs a chip? And why are they still referring to Intel as a processor? Well, as you dig deeper into this, you see that Apple calls this a system on a chip, an SOC, because it takes several components that are usually separate and puts them on a single chip. So this includes the CPU, the graphics processor, the USB and Thunderbolt controllers, the secure enclave, neural engine, image signal processor, audio processing hardware, and a whole lot more. So to clear up any confusion, each of the elements of the chip are separate of the on the Intel version, whereas they are all contained inside of the chip on the Apple M1. So you have the Intel processor, and then you have the graphics processor. So looking at the Intel system versus the MacBook Pro M1 system, what we can see is we can see a larger CPU and GPU combination on the Intel version, and you have this more condensed chip on the M1. So as you see, everything's contained inside of this one chip where you have this whole area where you're gonna contain the integrated GPU and the processor here on the Intel version. So they're separate, but they're still contained under the same package, whereas the system on a chip is literally all of these different elements on this singular chip inside of the M1. Moving forward, we see that Apple's A12 and A14 and Apple's M1 chip are based off of the same architecture. So contained inside of the Apple A12 chip is the A12 Bionic system on a chip layered over Micron and blah, 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 number, 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 four gigs of RAM. So that's what we're noticing here. So what we're seeing and reason number one why the M1 is cheaper is Apple has taken all the years of development into their iOS devices and brought it over to their Mac system. And so what we're seeing here is we're seeing the CPU closely unified, and that's why they call this unified memory, with their RAM. So you have a chip with eight gigs of unified memory right here within it. So what we're seeing is under this hatch here is this chip. Okay, so what we see is we see Apple's iOS technology, well not iOS because iOS is their operating system, but what we're seeing is Apple device, um, mobile device technology making its way onto their Mac systems. So we're getting all those years of R&D into the Mac systems, which is in essence, they're not having to charge us all these R&D costs by basically taking the technology they developed and putting it into the Mac devices. So we have reason number one. Now, let's talk about unified RAM. Unified RAM is a practice that Apple has been perfecting in their iPhones, or more accurately, their entire iOS suite for many years. Roughly two Apple keynotes ago, they were already teasing out the idea that Apple Silicon would be making its way into the Mac lineup. So it's no surprise to see more than just a processor, but rather the entire system that Apple designed to handle computing. So unified RAM is faster because the computation time between when the processor sends the order and the RAM receives it is exponentially faster than a traditional system. And so if you're curious about what I'm talking about as far as sending and receiving orders, I have 
have a whole video based on how a CPU works, um, and you can check that out in the YouTube cards above. And then you'll understand when a CPU sends out a message, it's telling the RAM, hey, do this task. So if the RAM is closer to the CPU, that means that eight gigs of unified memory could actually in fact be faster than 12 or 16 because it has less travel distance it needs to go to get those commands. So there's another reason why we're seeing a better pricing because you can get better performance out of eight gigs rather than needing 16 gigs. All right, moving forward, we are seeing an iOS first environment. Seeing these developments have confirmed my intuitions regarding an iOS first first, or should I say mobile first, experience on Apple. Since the launch of the iPad, Apple has been on a course of making the iOS experience their number one user experience. In fact, for a few years, we saw Apple almost completely ignore their Mac lineup, giving us subpar performance at the Mac tax price. And it was not a pleasant few years. And if you have been, if you had to purchase a computer uh, between the ranges of about 2015 and 2019, you know that the performance was very, very limited in the developments and increases in performance during that time period because they were pouring so much development into their iOS lineup. Since the conception, excuse me, since their conception, Apple has led the pack of tech development in an unorthodox way. Right now, we are seeing iOS move on to Mac, and this is the beginning of the bleeding between Mac and iOS. So Apple mobile devices. This to me is brilliant because what we're seeing also is we're seeing that Windows based computers are trying to take on the touchscreen space. That is a, and it's a real disappointment in what they're doing. They're trying to take um, desktop based computers and add touchscreen elements to them. Whereas we're seeing Apple take their iOS devices, which they have really perfected. They have made iOS devices so intuitive and they're bringing that technology towards their Mac lineup. And so to me, the two worlds colliding will be a big win for Apple in the next few years. So what I'm saying is we're going to see Mac's iOS meet up with Mac's we're going to see Apple's iOS meet up with Mac's more desktop oriented systems. And we're going to see this collision and it's going to be just insane for the user experience in years to come. Now, less ports and less connectivity is something that you're going to sacrifice is some as part of the reason you're going to see a little bit of savings here on the new Mac M1. The Intel still has four ports, whereas the M1 only has the two ports. So Intel model is capable of a four Thunderbolt connection and an eGPU, whereas the M1 model has two Thunderbolts and no eGPU connection, which means that you will not be able to benefit from eGPUs, which would be really helpful if you're going to be doing a lot of heavy, hardcore video editing, you're going to be doing graphical processing, you're going to be doing motion graphics, things along those lines with the Intel version you'll be able to plug in an eGPU and get more graphical power with the M1 you will be unable to do so. Less customization is something that we are going to continue to see as Apple develops their own components. So Apple will continue to decrease the level of customization it provides to consumers as they continue to produce their own internal components and refine what it means to build a computer on their own terms. So the result of Apple's prices coming down means that you'll be left with choosing what Apple wants you to choose rather than having more customization. And this is something that a lot of people have mentioned. As you get deeper into the iOS, not iOS, sorry, into the Mac OS ecosystem and you fall in love with it, you're stuck with whatever their next generation is. And a lot of people saw that when purchasing the 2017 to 2009, 2016 to 2019 MacBook Pros with a butterfly keyboard. You were stuck. You had to do what they wanted you to do. You didn't have any options. You either buy Mac OS on this computer or you can go buy a Windows. That's basically what we saw happening. So the downside of Mac taking on all of their own components is that you're going to be stuck with what they say is proper computing power and what is right on their sop, on their platform. The Apple tax. This was something that a lot of people talked about and not, the question begs, begs, where's the Apple tax? Even when you pair these two computers up, this is the 256 gig RAM, 256 gigabyte price. And this is the 512 gigabyte price. This right here is the equivalent to this computer here. So for roughly, let's see, five, eight, three $300 cheaper, you get the Apple M1 chip, which is way better performing inside of Photoshop, which I'll show you here in a minute. And it's got a better battery life. It runs cooler. It runs quieter. So where's the Apple tax go? 
And that's a big thing that we've been seeing is because Apple shifted away from having to purchase Intel parts and they brought in their own R&D from their iOS systems, we're seeing that Apple did not in fact charge us for those upgrades. That's pretty awesome. And so will Apple make a GPU, which they'll make their bigger pro versions of the computers even more affordable and more efficient? We shall see. For right now, they've developed this M1 chip and it did not charge us for it. They did not take the R&D cost from iOS and bring it onto the Mac systems. That was a big benefit. I'm honestly shocked because they could have introduced this at the same price and nobody would have barked. Nobody would have said anything about it. So that's pretty, pretty incredible to see Mac do that in my personal opinion. All right, now let's look here at the Photoshop score. So what I want you to see right here, this is the Apple MacBook Pro i5. Now the Mac, Apple MacBook Pro i5 here is the current MacBook Pro as we see it right here. That's what we're seeing. We're seeing the 2020 i5 quad core processor from Intel inside of this computer. This is a 412 in the Puget Systems benchmark. Here, a few over is 565. This is the new MacBook Pro M1. So what that means is for $300 cheaper, you get um, over 100 points more performance in Photoshop. So would I recommend the new MacBook Pro M1 for Photoshop? Yes, I would, because this was a great computer, honestly, for Photoshop. And that they've beat it out by over 100 points is a wonderful score and really a great recommendation from me to you on why you should buy this computer, even though it's slightly concerning that why is it cheaper? Well, to me, it's cheaper because they did not pass on all the development for the iOS devices and all the years of R&D for the chips they created for those devices. So they're cheaper but are they that much better? We've seen it's better in Photoshop, but what about the other applications? Find out what makes the MacBook Pro M1 so good by watching my other video right here in the end cards or the YouTube cards above, and we'll talk through video editing. We're gonna talk through the benchmarks. We're gonna talk through a lot of other things of why these MacBook Pro M1s are better than the previous Intel versions. So if you've enjoyed this video, definitely smash down that like button. If you're ready to make a purchase already without any other information, uh, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. If you do use that link to make a purchase, we'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. Those are affiliate links, but that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. I'm Benji Kaiser. Make sure you keep creating, keep designing, and keep editing. I'll see you here on the next video.